solids tend to have a lot fewer testable properties than fluids do. But one thing you're likely to encounter is a modulus of elasticity. A modulus of elasticity basically tells you how much a solid will change shape in response to some force or some pressure. There are three primary moduli of elasticity, all of which are defined by this general equation, the modulus equals the stress over the strain. So the stress is the force or pressure that is being applied, and the strain is the amount that it changes relative to its original dimensions. So the first one we'll go through is the Young's modulus. Young's modulus, which is represented by multiple letters, but we'll use Y here, is basically a one-dimensional change that we're looking at. So here, what we're doing is we're applying a force and we're seeing how much the solid changes shape within the vertical dimension. So to calculate the Young's modulus, you look at the force over the surface area that the force is being applied to. And then you're going to examine the strain by looking at how much it, its length changes relative to its initial length. So this is a common thread that you'll see a lot. You'll be applying some sort of stress and you're looking at how much it changes in one dimension relative to its initial value in that dimension. The shear modulus is more of a measurement of how much something twists. So whereas Young's you might see with how much a supporting beam can support weight, or you might see it used architecturally, how much can this thing withstand in one direction? Shear is a measurement of how much it's going to shift as you apply a force to it. And so once again, the numerator here is force over area, but the thing that you're looking at as far as strain goes is how much it twists or shears within this dimension relative to its overall length. So how much does it get malformed relative to its length? So once again, a very, very similar formula, but the shear modulus might be something you encounter with um, a tennis shoe or anything that's supposed to withstand pressure going in a certain direction and it kind of gets malformed in a shear-like manner. The bulk modulus is the third one you'll encounter, and this is one of, rather than changing in one dimension, instead you're looking at a multiple dimension change because it's going to be a measurement of how much volume strain it undergoes when a pressure is applied to it. So the numerator here is slightly different. It's not a force over an area, but in a way it kind of is. It's a pressure that is often represented as a force over area, but what you're really considering is how much does a change in pressure relative to its initial pressure cause it to change its volume? And so the numerator is change in P and the denominator here is how much its volume changes relative to what it was initially. So all of these are fairly straightforward formulas. They're all very similar. The stress is a force over an area. The strain is a change in one or more dimensions over its initial value in that dimension. But where this can get tricky is when you start to apply units to it. You can just imagine that if you have force over area, it might be a Newton's per meter cubed, but that's only the numerator. You could have the denominator be equals some number of meters per meter in the denominator. And you can see how that can get fairly complicated. And so my recommendation whenever you're dealing with a modulus of elasticity is to forget about the units entirely and break it back down into something fairly simple. Break it down into the fact that the modulus equals the stress over strain. So then if they ask you a question about two different materials that both have a force applied to them, and your question is which one undergoes a greater change in height, for example, what they're really asking you is which one undergoes a greater strain uh, when experiencing the same stress. So, uh, so the question then is what, would, what modulus would involve a large change in strain under the same amount of stress. So something with a small modulus of elasticity means that that thing, when it experiences a force, undergoes a much greater strain than it would otherwise. And so the bottom line is rather than dealing with units and complex formulas and things like that, break it down into really simple things. If the modulus is small and the stress is the same, that means the strain must be rather large. 
So here's an example of that principle of rather than considering units, instead break it down into simple terms. Stress, strain, and the modulus in order to solve a problem. You'll already notice that the units given here for the Young's modulus are complicated and beyond the level that we want to be doing for our calculations. So rather than that, what we'll do is just uh, maintain fairly simple terms. We've been provided that aluminum has a Young's modulus of 70 and iron has a Young's modulus of 210. And the question is, given two beams, and these beams are equal, equal in all these different dimensions, which of them will compress less under a 10,000 Newton force? And so what we have here with aluminum is we're gonna break it down into simply the Young's modulus equals the force. We can even ignore the surface area in this case. And uh, then we're just trying to figure out how big does this number on the bottom have to be. Versus iron, it's 210 with the same numerator and obviously some change. Now what we know is that for uh, 10,000 divided by something to be equal to 70, what we need to have is we need this number to be larger. So that means the aluminum will compress to a greater degree under this force whereas the iron will compress to a lower degree because 10,000 divided by something equals only 210. And so the bottom line is that uh, if this is constant and this number is smaller, that means that you must have a greater denominator. And I think that's the best way to look at it. You may notice with these calculations that all of the units don't even really make sense, but the bottom line is that if you think of it in terms of simple terms, stress, strain, and the modulus, and just look at if one gets bigger, what happens to the other, that's the best way to tackle these problems and you can avoid a lot of complicated unit conversions here.